Hey guys, um, just wanted to talk to you about what some of the things the Lord's been laying on my heart, but, and the reason why I title this one, Time is Holy, is even in politics, because this isn't political, guys, I'm not, this isn't a political ad, I'm not running for presidency, you know, it can go to various different extremes on this. But I am going to share with what the Lord's telling me to share with you guys. <clears throat> One scripture to start it. Proverbs 29, 2. If the righteous are in authority, the city will rejoice. If the wicked are, they're going to groan, moan, mourn. Um, different versions. <clears throat> it's just time, guys, to arise and shine. Whether it's the school board, mayors, governors, senators, presidency. I'm not getting in the mix of this mess right now. As much as I am saying, pick the last couple presidencies. <clears throat> Very few people were in the office praying. Now, that's all you see, seems to, or a lot of. That's a good thing, guys. Should be. Because, we, honestly, as the body... We've been sticking our head in the sand and then we get all these ungodly laws and then all we want to do is bicker and debate about them. And I'm not saying we should <clears throat> count on the laws. Our trust should be in Jesus. That's what this, you know. One of my favorite cops, one of my favorite scriptures too, Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6. I got a bunch of favorite scriptures, but that's one of them. Don't, don't lean on this. <clears throat> Our heart. But wouldn't you rather have godly men and women that are leaders? <clears throat> I'll give you a couple examples here, guys, and then kind of just show you how we're, we've drifted off. <clears throat> One federal judge, I should have copied down her name, and I'm sorry I didn't, but she's standing for her faith in Jesus, her faith in Christ, her Christianity. People are like, man, you can't do that. You're a judge. It's like, well, I'm an elected official. I don't know that she said that, but that's kind of the gist of the story. She's an elected official, so yes, she can, unless she gets voted out. <laughs> There was another, I'm in Dallas, there was another judge in Dallas just sentenced someone to death. Not to death, I'm sorry. To life in prison. She got up off the bench, hugged the woman, and gave her her own personal Bible. But yet at the same time, she just meted out a worldly justice, but gave her true justice. That's what I'm saying, guys. And if we're not, you know, how are we gonna, how are we gonna be the light of the world? How are we gonna show and portray if we're just ignoring and stuck and not in 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 the opposite side of that extreme is yeah don't get him I'm not talking about getting in people's face Omar and all the other people that whether they we agree with them or don't agree with them and I'm gonna get to one of them too soon real next <clears throat> to show you even though it's natural but to show you my point if we're not there guys then. Something's going to fill the void. That's what we've got in this country. There is a storm coming, guys. Look at my video on that coming August 11th to 
2020 to September 11th. Doesn't look good, but yet it is good. It's a purging, separating time to rise and shine, guys. Stand for the truth. We all can get our salt boxes too, guys. Okay, I get it. A lot of this is going to be won in the secret places and the battles. I get that too. Who's your source? God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. But wouldn't you rather have somebody that during the day they may be in Congress helping pass bills and laws, and at night they're reading their Bible to their children and they're praying and they're seeking God? And his truth and his righteousness. <clears throat> or somebody that's, you know, doing things in the world. Come on, guys. So, <clears throat> I keep this short, sorry. It's real early in the morning and this coffee's kind of setting my stomach a little bit. So... Here's a couple things, okay? Recently, one of the candidates barked about taking the tax exemption from churches if we didn't cow down to the worldly agenda. And most, of the, a lot of the preacher that barked were barking at the at the bus driving by, but not what was in the bus, not the sin that was behind it. A few of them did, a couple big name ones did, caught it. But the vast majority were barking because they were threatening to punish if we didn't cut down to the worldly agenda. You can read between the lines. Singers are doing it. Telling us to calm down, to they won't sing if the Salvation Army doesn't do what they want them to do, then don't sing. Not sure I want to hear you anyhow. Sorry, not trying to be abrasive. I'm saying, I, I, you know, it's time for us to rise and shine. Yes, we can. We still need to show those people love of Christ, but we're not going to be able to show them if we. Hidden in the back seat, and just, so. But back to this point. They were barking about the money, because they're going to take the money. Their tax exemption was what everybody was up in arms about. The vast majority of them, I'm looking at the, the sitting. It wasn't even hidden in plain sight. It was blatant. Just blah. There it is. Garbage. Sin. Sorry. Sin is sin. Many of them, that's part of what the storm is. It's separating the idols. It's going to separate the, the, the sin that, that we've let in. Not just to our government, but to our churches, to our, to our country, to our schools, to, our, to all of it, guys. Even into our own lives. So, Maybe we should just, maybe churches should just be paying taxes, guys. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm still praying about a lot of that. I don't know. <clears throat> Helping our government. But I know we need to be involved in this, guys. Not in, because that can become an idol too. And it has become an idol. The politics has become an idol. Two sides. It's almost like a circus, guys. I know that's not gonna make very many pe people happy and if you're really for one candidate versus the other, but then here's here's another one, guys, to kind of throw out there to kind of make you, this is, it's time to reevaluate, pray, reevaluate where we're at. <clears throat> like I said, we can't be that light if we're not in the room. <clears throat> we're off in this 
unreal world, <clears throat> expecting something when maybe God wants us to do something. Esther, and that's not political, but man, she had to go to the king. He didn't just walk into his palace and say, look, dude, I got something to tell you. And there was people, what the politics of it was people, you know, I mean, people lay in wait to kill people like that. He didn't just do that. A little apprehension. I'm sure all kinds of stuff going through the woman's mind. But she knew that she had to do what she had to do. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> this. I'm going to end with this other scripture, but. I don't know why I'm saying this. I probably won't say this because it's probably not really as relevant. I'm going to end with this. In prayer, didn't like what I heard, but I real there's way more to this story than this, but to this message too. But the Lord told me, he said, it's time for people in the ministry to get over themselves. Man, God, I minister to people all the time at the homeless shelter, at 7-Eleven, the homeless. He told me my platform was where he sends me. I've been different places. Um, not nothing. I'm not saying I'm, because that's another part of the message, but it's not me. It's just wherever he sends me, guys, I'm going to preach the gospel. But when he said that, it kind of hurt. And then he said, go to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Goes along with the first scripture I just said, honestly. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. <clears throat> it's time to turn, guys. Turn back to Jesus. So I'm going to end with this. <clears throat> um, Imagine that humbling ourselves. Imagine that praying, seeking his face. Imagine that people praying in the White House where we govern the land. Why would we not want that, guys, honestly? <clears throat> Why would we sh step away, shun from it? Because that's what the enemy wants. Us to think there's something wrong with that. So they can trick and deceive. I am gonna say this, okay? This is natural. But sometimes that saying the truth is somewhere in, in the middle, some is, is it can be very relevant, guys. The enemy wants to deceive us and think we can't have a voice in our government and slap a label on it and tell us we're trying to be political or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Whatever mess you want to call it. This this one is part of it. Guys, it's, it's natural, okay? We need to really, really examine what's going on. And this is one thing. It was natural. <clears throat> um, before, the, before the election, what was it, eight days? The FBI director, James, James Comey, comes out and says, you know, about the emails and all, you know, and that's still kind of a sore subject for people. It's still going on. It's still kind of a mess and just a bunch of kind of surreal stuff, too, honestly. <clears throat> but the reality of it, guys, when you really look at it or what it kind of is, there was other reasons, I'm sure, but... One of them was to save his own skin and, and his own job because he thought he st stood a better chance with, with, with Trump than with, with Hillary because he'd been investigating for a long time. You think she would have kept him on if she became elected president? Honestly? 
would any of you put the shoe on the other foot? Probably not. So, she, you know, so whether you liked her or don't like her, voted for her or don't, didn't vote for her or whatever, you know, she kind of got thrown under the bus on that one a little bit. He did abuse his authority a little bit. I'm not saying the guy's like totally dishonest. He's just human. And he made a judgment call and was an error though. But the reality of it was, a lot of it was because he was trying to save his behind, his job, his career. So, he, you know, it wasn't really politically motivated. It was more just selfish. So we have to look at the totalitarian, totalitarianism of all this. And I'm going to end with this. November 2016. Look it up. It's on my YouTube channel. Jesus at the Center. <clears throat> and if he's not going to be at the center of this, guys, no wonder it's a mess. So we need to get him back in the center of this, guys, and quit sitting on the church pews, in the debate lines, or whatever. If he's telling you to do something, do it. If he's telling you to run for Congress, do it. I know a couple different type, different ministers that, you know, one's a, well, both of them, but, I mean, and there's others too. I mean, it's like, some people are getting elected in different places, might not even be seen. I said, wouldn't you rather have somebody godly in your leadership, whether it's school board, to mayors, to governors, to Congress, to presidency, like I said, of course. So it's time to be the light. It's time to rise and shine. Not be ashamed of the gospel. Not hide behind because we don't want to jack with it, kind of. We just want to pray about it and say, you know, and prayer is, man, guys, pray, pray, pray. Of course, absolutely, that is going to change things. <clears throat> but also so is being there and being the light. And being his voice. So, like I said, this isn't a political ad. Because um, we can get in our soapbox on either side. And there really shouldn't be a side. It should be Jesus at the center. So it should be God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And so let's let's just do it. Love you guys. Um, tune in, share, you know, comment. I don't care if you thumbs up, thumbs down, just comment, let's hear it. If I'm in error, tell me, I'll, I'll listen. Um, you can Google us at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com directly, or you can just go to Jesus is alive in America.com. There's a blog page. Um, you'll have to ask me to get on there. Or you can just Google Jesus is Alive in America and find this too. So anyhow, we love you guys. Um, what's the Lord telling you to do? Just do do that. Kind of like that Nike commercial. Just do it. So, and we can do it without an attitude too. That's part of it. That's been a lot of my prayers lately too. Is because like, man, God, I need to. You show me some things, telling me some things to say and do, and it's like, okay, God, but. Let me not do it with an attitude. <clears throat> That's just me, Larry the Cable Guy, I guess. But whatever works for you, too. Just but filter it through God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word, and in your secret place, in your prayer, and get the direction from Him. That's why it's a lamp. The Psalms 109, 5, I think. But, you know, the Scripture, but... It'll be a light into our path and a lamp under our feet. Or, you know, 
might have muddled up a little bit. It's real early in the morning, guys. I'm a little tired. <clears throat> Love you guys. Um, let's just do what the Lord's telling us to do. So we can be that light of the world. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.